When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun, where the place upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover the fog and The fog and filthy fair. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Cover through the fog and filthy air. Fair is foul and foul is fair. Cover through the fog and filthy air. What bloody man is that? He can report I seemeth by his plight of the revolt the new estate. Tis the sergeant who, like a good and hearty soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend, say to the king the knowledge of the broil if thou didst leave it. Doubtful, it stood as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their heart. The mercy of MacDonald, worthy to be rebel, for to that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him. The western world's current of gallow glasses is supplied. And fortune on his damn cool smiling shone like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak. Oh, brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution. Like Valor's minion carved out his passage. Till he faced a slave, which near shook hands and obeyed farewell to him. Till he unseamed him from the nave to the chops and fixed his hand upon our battlements. Oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman. As once the sun gains his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders break. So from that spring, whence comfort seems to come, discomfort swells. Mark, King of Scotland, mark. No sooner justice had with valor armed, compelled these skipping currents to trust their heels, than away, Lord, surveying the edges. With furbished arms and new supplies and men began a fresh assault. Dismayed not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? Yes. As sparrow eagles or hare the lion, thy say sue, thy must report they were. As cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. The they they but debate in reeking wounds, memorize another Golgotha. Cannot tell. But I faint, my gashes cry for help. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go, get them surgeons. Who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross. What a haste looks through his eyes. So should he look that seems to speak things strange. God save the king. Whence camest thou worthy Thane? In fight, great king. The Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people in the Norway itself in terrible numbers. Since you were that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor. Again, a dismal conflict. But that Valona thrived and laughed in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons. Point against point, rebellious, arm against arm, curving his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. No more that thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. From a drum, Macbeth doth come. The weird sisters, hand in hand, her hosters of the sea and land, land. thus to go about, about, thrice to thine and thrice to mine, and thrice again to make up nine. Peace! The charms wound up. So foul and fair a day I've not seen. How far is it called to force? What are these? So withered and so wild in their attire that look not like inhabitants of the earth and yet are on it. Live you? Or are you aught that man may question? You seem to understand me by each at once her choppy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be woman, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can, what are you? All hail Macbeth! Hail to thee, Thane of Gloms! All hail Macbeth! Hail to thee, Thane of Cardor! All hail Macbeth! Thou shalt be king hereafter! Good sir! Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastic or is that indeed which outwardly you show? 
My noble partner will greet with present grace and great prediction. My noble having in a royal hope, placing draft to God. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say with great the world which will not, speak then to me. Neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail! 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be not. So all hail Macbeth and great. Thank when Macbeth, all hail! Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. By sign of step I know I am fain of Blom, the power of Cardinal. The fain of Cardinal lives! A prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cardinal. Say from whence you owe the strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such prophetic greeting? Speak, I charge you! The earth hath bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they banished? Into the air, and what seemed corporal melted his breath into the wind. Would they have stayed? Such things here as we do speak about, are we eaten on the insane root that takes reason to prove? What children shall be king? Who shall be king? And then a father do when he not so. You shall sing human words. Who's there? The king hath happily received Macbeth the news of thy success. When he reads thy personal venture in the rebel's fight, his wonders and his praises do contend what should be thine or his. Silence that. In viewing are the rest of the self same day. Find thee in the stout Norian ranks. Nothing of fear of what thyself didst make strange images of death. As thick as hail came post to post, and every one did bear thy praises in the kingdom's great defense, and poured them down before him. We are here to give thee from our master thanks, only to herald thee into his sight, not see thee. And for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cottle. In which addition, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. But we speak true, the Thane of Cottle lives. Why do you thus be borrow robes? Lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears the life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined treason's capital, confessed and proved to have overthrown. Long and sane of Cardinal, the greatest is the mind. Thanks to your kings. Do not hope your children shall be kings. When those that gave the fane of God or to me promised no less to them. That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown. He cites Saint of Cardinal, but tis strange. Oftentimes, to one to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths. When us with honest trifles, he betrays and keeps one. Cousins, a word I pray you. Two troops are told, happy prologues to the swelling act of the Imperial Queen. I thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural solicitude cannot be ill. It cannot be good. Still, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing the truth? I am the saint of Cardor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion? Whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock my ribs against the use of nature. Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thoughts, whose murder yet is but fantastical shakes, to my single state of man that functions is smothered into my and nothing is but what is not. If chance shall have me king, why chance may crown me without my sir. Come what come may, time and the hour runs through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favor, my dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn the leaf to read them. Let us toward the king. Let us think about what hath chance to do. If more time, the interim, having waited for the speaker of three parts. Very glad for the now. Come, friends. Is execution done on Cardor? Are not those in commission yet returned? My liege, they have not yet come back, but... I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treason, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one that had been studied in his death to give away the dearest thing he owed us for a careless trifle. There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a man on whom I built an absolute trust. Oh, worthiest cousin. The sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Would thou hadst less deserved that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine own. Only I have left to say, more is thy duty and more than all can pay. The service and loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they do by doing everything safe toward your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee and will labor to make thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, Thou hast no less deserved, and must be known no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee, and hold thee to my heart. There if I grow, the harvest is your own. My plenteous joys, wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, 
No, we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. Which honor must not unaccompanied invest him only, but signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers. From hence to Inverness and bind us further to you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy coddle. A prince of Cumberland. That is the step on which I must fall down or else I'll leap. For my weight lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand yet. Let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see her. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they as I stood wrapped in the wonder of it came missives from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cawder, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time as Thane, king that shot me. This I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Glams thou art and codder, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Great art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. If thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily. Wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou wouldst have great alarms. All that cries, thus thou must do if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishes should be undone. Highly hither that I may pour my spirits in thine ears, and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid that seem to have thee crowned withal. What is thy tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him who wert so would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thing is coming. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. <sighs> Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shall shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. night and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. And 
my keen knife, see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold! Hold! Great clams, worthy Carter, greater than both by the all tale hereafter. letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight, and when goes hence tomorrow as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my fame, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Not like the innocent flower, the serpent under it. With its coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come with solely sovereign sway and mastery. speak further. Only look up clear, who all to favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. See, see our honored hostess. The love that follows us, sometime is our trouble which we still thank as love. Herein I teach you how you shall bid God ild us for your pains and thank us for your trouble. All our service in every point, twice done and then done double, were poor and single business to contend against those deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. For those of old, and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. But where's the plain of Cawdor? We coursed him at the heels and had a purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well. And his great love, sharp as his spur, hath pulled him to his home before us. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever have theirs themselves, and what is theirs in common, to make their audit known at your highness' pleasure, still to return your own. Give me your hand. Conduct me to mine host. We love him highly, and shall continue our graces towards him by your leave. It were done when tis done, and twere well it were done quickly. The assassination could tremble up the consequence, and catch with her surcease success, that but this blow might be the be-all and end-all here. But here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we'd jump the life to come. In these cases we still have judgments here, but we but teach bloody instructions, which being taught return to plague the end. Even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, that his virtues will plead like the angel trumpet tongued against the deep damnation is taking off, and pity like a naked newborn babe striding the blast, or heaven's cherubim horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air shall blow the horrid deed in every eye that tears shall drown the winds. I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, only vaulting ambition which leaps itself and falls on the other. <clears throat> How now, what news? He is almost soft. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked me? No, he not, he has. We will proceed no further in his business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which should be worn now in their new sloth, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk? Where are you dressed yourself? Have it slept since? 
wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely. Then this time is such an account by love. Art thou afeared to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have all that thou esteemst the ornament of life and live a coward in thine own esteem? Let an I dare not wait upon I would. Like the poor cat of the adage. Pretty peace. I dare do all that may become a man who dare do more as none. What beast was thou? You break this enterprise to me. When you durst do it, then you were a man, and to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck. You know now tender it is to love the babe that makes me. I would. While it were smiling in my face, I plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out. Had I so sworn as you have done to this? If we should fail. We fail? But screw your courage to the sticking place. We will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather his days hard journey shall soundly invite him. His two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so conceive that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbic only. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What put not upon his spongy officers? Who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chambers and used their very daggers if they had done? Who dares receive it other? As we shall make our griefs and clamors roar upon his death. I am settled, and bend up each corporal age into this terrible feat. Away. And mock the time of fairest show. False face must hide what the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. And she goes down at twelve. I take his tis later, sir. Hold. Take my sword. There's husbandry in heaven. The candles are all out. Take thee that too. Heavy summons lies like lead upon me, yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers, restrain in me the thoughts nature gives way to in repose. Give me my sword. Who's here? A friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest? The king's abed. He hath been in unusual pleasure and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This diamond he greets your wife withal by the name of most kind hostess and shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, our will became servant to defect, which shall should free have wrought. All's well. I dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you, they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can treat an hour to serve, we will spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. If you shall cleave to my consent, when tis it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it, but still keep my bosom franchise and allegiance clear. Good, good I shall be counseled. Thanks, sir. The like to you. Now, go bid thy mistress when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell, and get thee to bed. Is this the dagger which I see before me? Handled toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation, proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? I see thee yet, in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalst me the way that I was going, and 
such an instrument I was to use. Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on my blade and dungeon, gouts of blood, which was not so before. There is no such thing. It is this bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now all the one half world nature seems dead. And wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale heaven's offerings and withered murder alarmed by his sentinel. The wolf whose howls his watch. Thus with his stealthy pace. Tarkin's ravishing strides towards his design moves like a ghost. Thou, sure and firm setter, hear not the steps I make, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones shall prate of my whereabouts and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deed, too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven. Or to hell. made them drunk, hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. <coughs> Hark! <coughs> Peace. It was the owl that shrieked, the fatal bellman who gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their posets that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Rock! I am afraid they have awakened and tis not done. Tis the attempt and not the deed that confounds us. Hark, I laid the daggers ready, he could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I would have done it. My husband? I have done the deed. It's now not your noise. I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now? As I descended. I. Hawk, who lies in the second chamber. Donald Bain. Oh, this is a sorry sight. Foolish thought to say a sorry sight. As one did laugh and sleep, and one cried and murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and all men the other. As they had seen me with these hangman hands. Listening to their fears, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing, and amen stuck in my throat. These things must not be thought after these ways. So it will make us mad. Methought I heard a voice cry, Sleep no more. Macbeth doth murder sleep. The innocent sleep, sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life sore labors, bath balm of hurt mind. Great nature's second course, chief nourisher of life's feast. What do you mean? Still, it cried. Sleep no more to all the house. Glom hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more! Who was it that thus cried? My worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brainsickly of things. Go, get some water, wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go. 
Carry them. Smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Look on again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. Sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears a painted devil. If you do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all. For it must seem their guilt. What hands are here? Oh, they pluck out mine eyes. And all the great Neptune's wishing. Wash this blood clean from my hands. No, this hand. Or rather the multitude in the sea than Carnadine making the green one red. My hands are of your color. Yet I shame to wear a heart so white. I'm knocking at the sun. Retire we to our chambers, a little water will clear us of this deed. How easy it is then. Constancy has left you unattended. Hark! How can you get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers? Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, twere best not know myself. Why don't give me that? If a man were porter of Hellgate, should have rolled turning the key. Knock! 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 Who's there in the name of Biel's above? Faith! There's a farmer who hanged himself in the expectation of Flint. Come in time! Have napkins and now about you. Here you'll sweat for it. Knock! 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 Who's there in the other devil's name? Faith! Here's a, an equivocator who could swear on both scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Here's an English tailor, come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knock, knock, never quiet. But this place is too cold for hell, I'll devil porter it no further. I had thought to let in some of all professions who go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock. Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awakened him, here he comes. Good morrow, both. Good morrow, noble sir. Is thy king stirring, worthy thane? Not yet. He did me to call timely on him, and I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is a door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. We lay, our chimneys were blown down, and, as I say, lamentings heard in the air. Strange screams of death. Some say the earth was feverish and in shape. It was a rough night. My own remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. What's the matter? Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name me. Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What did you say? The life? Mean you, his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorkin. Do not bid me speak. See and then speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason back or Donald and Malcolm awake! Shake off this downy sleep death's counterfeit and look on death itself! Up! Up! And see the great doom's image! Malcolm, backwash of your graves, rise up and walk like spice to countenance this horror. Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parlay the sleepers of the house? Speak. Speak. Our gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. Repetition in a woman's ear would murder as a breath. 
Banquo, 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 a royal master's murder. Alas, what? In our house? To cruel anywhere. Your doth pretty contradict thyself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. For from this instant, there is nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn. What is amiss? You all who do not note. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father is murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers, which, unwiped, were found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who could be wise, amazed, temperate, and furious? Loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The expedition of I violence will outrun the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. His gashed stabs look like a breach in nature. Maroon's wasteful entrance there. His murderers, steeped in the color of their trade. Their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain who had a heart to love? And in that heart, courage to make love know! Look to the lady! Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? What shall be spoken here? Where our fate, hidden in auger hole, may rush and seize us. That's the way, our tears are not yet rude. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid that supper and exposure, let us meet again to question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence against undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous mouth. So do I. So all! So Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet together in the hall. Well contented. contented. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. All to England. To Ireland I. Our separated fortune shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers and men, smiles, the nearer blood, the nearer bloody. This murder chef that shot hath not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave taking, but shift away. There's warrant in that theft which steals itself, and there's no mercy left. I've seen hours dreadful and things strange, but the sore night hath trifled former knowings. Thou seest the heavens as troubled with man's act threaten his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, and yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is it night's predominance of the day's shame that darkness does the face of earth and tomb when living light should kiss it? Tis unnatural, even like the deed that's done. Here comes the good Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? Why, see you not? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Alas, the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm and Donald and the king's two sons are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, fruitless ambition that wilt raven up by known life's means. Then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Schoon to be invested. Where is Duncan's body? Carried to Colmkill, the sacred storehouse of his predecessors and guardian of their bones. Will you to Schoon? No, cousin. I'll suffice. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Thou hast it now. King, Cawdor, Gloms, all is the weird woman promised. I fear thou place most foully for it. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee make better speech to shine, why by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well and set me up in hope? But hush, no more. Guest, if he had been forgotten, it would be as a gap in our great feast, an all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with the most indissoluble tie forever knit. Bride you this afternoon. I, my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice in today's council, but we'll take tomorrow's. Is far you right? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time twixt this and supper. 
Go not my horse the better, I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing to their cruel parasite and filling their hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when therewithal we shall have cause of state craving us jointly. Hie you to horse, adieu, till you return at night. Go splance with you. Aye, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your horse is swift and sure foot as I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time, till seven night to make society the sweeter welcome. We will keep ourselves this, till supper time alone. Well then, God be with you. Sarah, I'll work with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing. But be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo do stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that should be feared. Tis much he dares, and to that dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valor to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and under him my genius is rebuked, as he tied the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him, father, to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, no son of mine succeeding. If to be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered and put rancors in the vessels of my peace only for them and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seed of Banquo's kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Now, go to the door and stay there till we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. Well then, now have you considered my speeches? No, was he who in times past held you so under fortune which you thought had been our innocent self? This I made good to you in our last conference, passed in probation with you, how you were born in hand, how cross the instruments who wrought with them, and all things else that might to a half a soul into a notion crazed, say thus did Banquo. You made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. You find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my liege. <laughs> I, in the catalog, we go for men, as hounds and greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, choughs, water rugs, and demi wolves are all clipped by the name dogs. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter. Everyone, according to the gifts which bounteous nature has in him closed, whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike. And so of men. Now, if you have a station in that file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it. And I will put this business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off, grapples you to the heart and love of us, who wears our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world hath so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance to mend it or be rid on it. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, True my, my lord. lord. So was he mine. And though I could with bare-faced power sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, but wail his fall who I myself struck down. And thence it is to, that I to your assistance do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry weighty reasons. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Though our lives... Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise thee where to plant themselves. The moment on for it must be done tonight. And something from the palace. Always thought that I require a clearness. And with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in the works. Leance, his son, that keeps him company. 
whose absence is no less material to me than it is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight. If it finds heaven, must find it out tonight. Is Banquo gone from court? I, madam, but returns again tonight. Say to the king I would attend his leisure for a few words. Madam, I will. Not had. All's spent. Where our desires got without our intent. Tis safer to be that which we destroy than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. Oh no, no, no. Why do you keep alone? Sorius fancies your companions may be using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on. And without remedy should be without regard, but stun is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. We'll let the frame of things disjoint and both worlds will suffer ere we will eat our meals in fear and sleep in the afflictions of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace in on the torture of the mind, lying restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. After life's fitful fever, he sleeps well. Treason has done his worst, nor steel, nor poison. Malice domestic, foreign, levy, nothing can touch him further. Come on, gentle, my lord. Sleek all your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. So shall I love, and so I pray be you. Let your remembrance apply to Banquo. Present him eminence, both with eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must lave our honors in these flattering streams, and make our faces wizards to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife! Dost thou know that Banquo and his fleance live? What's in them nature's copies not eterne? With comfort yet, they are assailable. Then thou be jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere to black Hecate summons the shard born beetle with his drowsy hums hath rung night's yawning peal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, for thou applaud the deed. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rocky wood. Good things the day begin to droop and drowse, whilst night's black agents to their praise do rouse. Thou marvels at my words, but hold thee still. Things bad begun make themselves strong by ill. So pretty, go with me. But who did bid thee join with us? Macbeth. Then stand with us. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day, and near approaches the subject of our watch. Then tis he. The rest that are within the note of expectation already are in the court. The light, light. Tis he. Stand to it. It will be rain tonight. Let it come down! Right. Out the way? There's but one down, the sun is fled. We've lost the best half of our affair. Well, let's wait and say how much is done.
You know your own degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks, Thanks to your, your majesty. majesty. We ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her st state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks they are welcome. Hear, hear. See, so they encounter thee with their heart's thanks. Both sides are even, here I'll sit in the midst. Be large in mirth, and on we'll drink a measure of the table round. There's blood upon thy face. His banquet is bad. Tis better thee without than he within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet he is good that did the life of Pleance. Most royal, sir. Pleance escaped. Then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, whole as the marble, founded as the rock. As blood in general is the casing air, but now I'm cabin, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. The banquet safe. I, my good lord. Safe in a ditch he bides with twenty trenched gashes on his head. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. <laughs> Sweet remembrancer. Now, good digestion weighed on appetite and health on both. Hear, hear. May it please your highness sit. Here had we now our country's on our roof, were the graced person of our bank will present. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, if your highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here is a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. Which of you have done this? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy boy locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit! Worthy friends! My lord is often thus and hath been from his youth. Pray you keep seat. If it is momentary, upon the thought he will be well again. If you much know him, you will offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard not. Oh, you a man. I and a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. What the stuff? This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Flaws and starts and postures to true fear would well become a woman's story and a winter's tale authorized by her grandam. Shame itself! Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look on but a stool. See there, look, lo, behold, how say you? Why, what care I? If thou canst not speak to, if Charnel's houses and our graves must send those that we bury back, our monuments shall be miles of kite. What? Quite unmanned in folly. I saw him. For shame! Blood hath been shed ere now. In the old and high, near the king's kitchen, purge the gentle lady. Ay, and since two murders have been performed, terrible for the evil. The time came. The brains were out, the man would die in their end. Now they rise again. Twenty mortal murders on the ground were pushed into my street. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. <laughs> I do forget. <laughs> My most worthy friends, do not use of me. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine, fill full. I drink to the general joy of the table. And to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss what he were here. To all and him and all and all. Our, our duties and, and the pledge. Avaunt and quit my sight! Let the earth hide thee! Thy bones are marrowless, thy blood is cold! Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with! <laughs> Think of this, good friends, but as a thing of custom. It is no other, only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare I dare? Approach thou like the rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the hurricane tiger. Take any shape of that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Or be alive again, and dare me to the desert with thy sword. If trembling I inhabit, then protest me the baby of a girl. Hence, horrible shadow! Unreal mockery! 
thyself, being God, I am a man again. Pray you sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broken the good meeting with most of my disorder. Can such things be? Come us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder. You make me strange, and I think that even to the disposition that I owe, that you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is flushed with fear. What sights, my lord? Pray you, speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once! Good night. I'd better help attend his majesty. It will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and please to speak. Augers and understood relations have by maggot pies and chops and rocks. Brought forth the secrets of my blood. What is the night? I want to go to the moon. Which is which? How sayst thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it, by the way. But I was there. There is not a one of them that in his house I keep the servant's speed. I will tomorrow, in the time I wield the weird sisters. More shadows speak. Now I am bent to know by the work of me and work. And for mine own good, all come shall be away. I am the acceptance of God. Should I wait no more, returning where tedious as the war? Strange things I have in my head to hear the hand, which must be active ere they may be spent. Do you like the season of all nature's Come. My former speeches have but hit your thoughts. You can interpret farther. When may I say, things are being strangely bored. You cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donald Bain to kill their gracious father. Damn it, facts, how it did bring the back. Do you not straight in pious rage the two delinquents tear, and where the slaves who drink and thralls who sleep? It's not that lazy thing. Well. My wife, too. It would have angered any heart alive to hear the men tonight. So that I say, he has borne all things well. And I do think, that had he done his sons under his key, as and please heaven, he shall not! They should find what true to kill a father. So should play on. Peace. But from broad words, because he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast, I fear Macduff will make you disgrace. So, you tell him he bestows himself. The son of Duncan, whom the tyrant told the new birth, lives in the English court. And though Macduff is gone, the report has so exact break the king that he prepares for some attempt to kill him. to Macduff. He did. After the sir, not I, the cloudy messenger comes back and haunts. He did say you'll rue the time that clogs me his answer. And that well might advise him to a caution to a hold what distance his wisdom can provide. Some holy angel flies to the court of England and unfold his message here to come. Let a swift blessing will soon take a this. I'll send my prayers with him.
Red Double Doubled, Toil and Trouble, Fire Burn and Cauldron Bubble, Double Double Toil and Trouble, Fire Burn and Cauldron Bubble. Round about the cauldron go, in the poison dead trail throw. Toad that under cold stone days and nights has thirty one. Sweltered that and sleeping got, boil the first in the charm pot. Double, double, double toil and trouble, fire and burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a penny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blindworm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell brought boil and bubble. Double, double, boil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, peak of wolf, witch's mummy, ma and gold. Of the raven, salty shot, root of hemlock digged in the dark, liver of blaspheming Jew, gall of goat in sleeps to be, slivered in the moon's eclipse, nose of turkin's harder slips, finger of burnt strangled babe, stitch delivered by a drab, make the ghoul thick and slab, add there to its tiger's charges, for the ingredients of our culture. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. Cool it with the baboon's blood. Then the charm is burned, I wish. By the pricking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. Open lost, whoever knocks. How now do you seek a black and midnight hat? What is he? I do need I can't you do by that which you profess. However you come to know it, answer me. Though you want to have an answer, let me find it. It's laid in the form of the rod, the trees blown down, the capital's top, the capital's top on their wards' head, the palaces and pyramids do float their heads to their foundations. Answer me to what I ask you. Speak! Demand! Say it thou from my mouth, or from my mouth. Call him! Let me see him. Poor and sour's blood that hath eaten her nine pharaoh. Grease that sweetened from the murders, give it, throw it to the flame. Come, high or low, thyself an office deftly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Lift back, lift back, lift back. Beware, victim. Beware. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast cut my fear aright with it. One word more. He will not be commanded. Here's another more potent than the first. And live, Macduff, what need I fear thee? Yet I will make assurance, double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, so that I may tell pale, pale-hearted fear of lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like thee to shield of peace, and wears upon his baby brows a rounded top of sovereignty? What is this? But speak not to He lies in the ground, take no care! Never be. Who can impress the force, bid the trees unfix this earth-bound root? Sweet bond is good. Rebellion's head rise never until the wood of burning rise, in our high place in Beth shall live the least of nature. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing more. Tell me if thou canst tell so much. In faithful will she ever reign in this kingdom. See, 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 no, no more. I will be satisfied. Did I me this and an eternal curse fall upon you? 
Let me know why seeks that cauldron, and what noise is this? Show! Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Thou art too like this fearful faithful down! Thy crown has seal mine eyeballs. My hair, thou art a gold time brows like the first. A third is like the former. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? A fourth. Star eyes, what for the line stretched for the pack of doom? Another yet, a seven. I'll see no more, and yet the eighth appears and bears a glass which shows me many more. And son I see three four balls and travel something is carried. Horrible sight. For now I see tis true. For the blood vulture men will smile upon me and point to one to his. What is this so? Where are they? Gone! Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar! Come in without them! Draw you the wheel system. No, my lord. Can they not buy you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected in the air with one they wine, and damned all those who trust them. I did your calendar this morning, and you lost the same one. It's two or three, my lord, to bring you word. The doctors fled to England. Fled to England. I might have gone. Now I'm now in the case of the same time. The blighty purpose of never all took place to be for me. For me, the very close thing with my heart shall be the first thing that I know. And even now, the crown might fall to pass. Be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon fight. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace me. No fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cools. But no more sights! What hath he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. Oh, he had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion, and his titles, in a place from whence he himself doth fly. He loves us not. He wants the natural touch for the poor wren, the most diminutive of birds will fight, her young ones in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love, as little is the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cause, I pray you school yourself. For your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the first season. I dare not speak much further. But who are the times when we are traitors who do not know ourselves? We hold them up from what we fear, yet know not what we fear. But upon a wild and violent sea, which way we move. I hit my little boot. It will not be long, but I'll be here again. Where is the world that is? Or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, what's in the front? Fathered he is, and, and yet he's fatherless. So much of fool should I feel on him. I disgrace him, he'll come to me. I need a box. So, your father's dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What? With worms and flies? With what I get, I mean, and so do they. Poor bird. Thus never fear the net nor lime, the pitfall nor the gem. Why should I, mother? For birds are not set forth. My father's not dead, by your saying. Yes, he is dead. How wilt thou do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Why, I can buy me twenty at any mark. Then you'll buy and sell again. Thus, this is the fall thy wit, and yet in faith is good enough for thee. Is my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? By one that swears and lies, and be all traitors on his still. Everyone that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged next to the mark? Everyone must be missing. Why, to be honest, and the lies and swears of fools. For there are enough lies and swears to be the honest men and of them. God help me, son. But how wilt thou do for a father? My father is dead. If you are not, there is good son after such a covenant, father. Look, father. Bless you, fair dame. I am not you known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. 
And now some danger does approach nearly. If you will take a holy man's advice, be not found here hence with your little ones. To frighten you thus, methinks I am too savage. To do worse to you, while far cold you, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you, I dare away no longer. Well, whither should I fly? I have done no harm. And yet I do remember now that I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometimes accounts of dangerous folly. But why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defense to say that I have done no harm? What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place. So unsanctified, where such as thou mayst find him. Now, thou shattered villain! Would I believe all wail? What no believe, and what I can redress as I shall find the time to friend, I will. That which you have spoke, it may be so, perchance, this tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I am young, but something you may deserve of him through me. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is a good and virtuous nature may recoil in an imperial charge. But I shall crave your pardon. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Angels are bright, so well, the brightest fell. I've lost my hopes. Perchance even there where I did find my doubts. Why in that rawness left you wife and child, those precious motives, those strong knots of love without leave taking? Lead, lead, poor country. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst where the whole space is in the tyrant's grasp. Be not offended. I speak not as an absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and... Each new day a gash is added to a wound. I think with all there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here from gracious England have I, off have I offered of ten thousand civil men. But think for all this, and I shall tread upon the tyrant's head and wear it on my sword. My poor country shall have more vices than it had before. More suffer and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself I mean in whom I know all the particulars of a vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, black and theft shall seem as pure as snow. Not in the legions of poor and hell can have a devil more damned than people to talk of theft. I grant him bloody, luxurious, avaricious, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name, but there is no bottom, none in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your mates could not fill up the cistern better with theft than such an one to reign. But do not fear yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a space of plenty and yet seek your gold. The time you may so good with, we have willing veins enough. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a stanchless avarice that were I king, I should cut off the nobles for their name, desire his jewels and his other house, and my more happy to be a response to more. And I should torch quarrels unjust against the good and loyal, destroying them for wealth. This avarice is over. Yet do not fear, Scotland has poison to fill us the will of your their own. All these are portable without their grace and aid. But I have none. These king becoming graces as justice, very temperance, stableness, bounty, perseverance, mercy, loneliness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude, I have no relish of them. Oh, my power is for the noble offer of the elf. Uproar the universe of peace, confound all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland, Scotland, such a one who fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live. O oh, nation miserable, when shalt thou see thy wholesome days again? Since that the truest issue of thy throne by his own interdiction stands accursed and does blaspheme his breed. Thy royal father was a most sainted king. The queen that bore the oftener upon her than on her feet. Fare thee well, thy hope and it doth this noble passion child of integrity has from my soul white to black people. Reconcile my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth by many of these trains hath sought to win me into his power. And modest wisdom plucks me from over-credulous faith. God above, deal between me and me. 
For even now I put myself to thy direction. Unspeak my own detraction. Here observe the stains and blames I laid upon myself and strangers in my nature. I am yet unknown to woman. Never was first born, scarcely have coveted what was mine. At no time broke my faith, and I have no less of a true But I am truly divine, and my poor country's to me. Whither indeed before thy year approached great Caesar, a thousand men, already at a point for setting forth. Now we're together, the chance of goodness be like our work in the world. Why are you tired? Let's walk in See who comes here. My countrymen, but yet I know him not. My every death has a walk in the I know him now. Good God, the time's removed from me and make this thing. Amen. Stand tall, for I did. Last country. Almost afraid to know itself. Could not be called our mother, but our grave. Who knows nothing? And the better soldier, none. But I could answer this comfort with the right. I have heard the house in the desert area with not that. But concerning me, the general cause would be great if you come in a single breath. For the main part between us, please be mine. Keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever. I shall possess it with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. I guess at it. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. To relate the manner, to add the death of you. Merciful heaven, what man never pull your hat upon your brows, give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers the old brought heart and bids it break. All my children killed. Wife, children, servants, all the people around me. And I must be from thence my wife killed too. I'm upset. Be comforted. Let us make medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones. Did you say all? Oh, hell, kite, all? All my pretty chickens and their dam at one fell soon. Dispute it like a man. I shall do so. I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things worth the work of the precious Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Oh, sinful Macduff! They were all struck for thee. Not that I am. Not for their own demerits, but for mine. They'll slaughter on their souls as in less than that. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart and rage it. Oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and rather with my tongue. But gentle heaven cut short of all intermission. Front to front bring thou this fiend of solid in myself. Within my sword blade set him. And if he escape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our lead. Macbeth is ripe for the shaking, and the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long, but never finds the day. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went to the field. I have seen her! Rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet door, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read and afterwards seal it, and again return to bed. Yet all this while in the most fast sleep. A great perturbation in nature to receive at once the benefit of sleep and do the effects of watching. In this slumbery agitation, besides her walking and other actual performances, 
What many times have you heard her say? That Dr. Kai will not report after her? You may to me and his most meet you should. Neither he nor anyone. Having no witness to confirm my speech. Oh, Rose, doctor, here she comes. Stop her staying close. How came she by the flight? I stood by her. She was led by her continuum. It's mad. You see, her eyes are open. I bet their senses shut. What is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. It's an accustomed action to shin with her, the thing thus washing her hands. I've been her to continue in a quarter of an hour. She speaks. I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance of the more strong. My lord, fie! What a soldier and a feared! Even here, who knows it? No men can call our power to account yet. The old man to offend so much. In him. Do you mark that? The same as life had a wife. She no more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all of this. Go to. Go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoken what she should not. I'm sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Charged. I would not have such a heart in my bosom for the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. May God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. Yet I have known those who have walked in their sleep who have died, holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale, I tell you yet again. Pankle's buried. He cannot come out on his grave. Even so. To bed. To bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come. Come, give me your hand. Done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. Foul whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. Infected minds to their deaf pillows will discharge their secrets. More need she the divine than the physician. God, God forgive us all. 
Look after her, remove from her the means of all annoyance. Still keep eyes upon her. So good night. My mind she's made to me my sight. I think, but dare not. Can I get doctor? The English power is near, led on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Revenge is burning them, for their dear causes, which the bleeding and the grim alarm excites the mortified man. Near Burnham Wood shall we meet them, and that way are they coming. Who knows if Donald Bane be with his brother? Sir, sir, he is not. I have a file of all the gentry. There is Seward's son, and many on rough use, even now, for such a What does the tyrant? Great does the name, he strongly fortifies. Some say he's mad. Others that lesser hate him do cause her unsure, but for certain he cannot buckle his distempered cause within the belt of fools. Now that he feels secret murder sticking on his hands, now men in revolt upgrade his faith reach. Those he commands will only command nothing in love. Now that he feels his title hang loose about him like a giant robe upon a dormant sea. Who then shall blame his pestered senses for a coil and start when all that is within him does condemn itself for being there? For well, march we on to do a beat in which was he truly owed. Make me no more reports, so them all fly! For Burnham would become to come to me, and I cannot taint with fear. That's the boy Malcolm, is he not born of woman? Experience that no all mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's woman born shall e'er have power upon me. Then fly, false thing, and mingle with the English of the church. My God's way by the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. Devil damn thee, laugh thou great face, moon, for thus thou art beautiful. There's ten thousand uh, uh, geese, villain, soldiers, sir. Oh, the conclusion over red thy fear, thou lily of the boy. What soldiers catch? Death of thy soul, those wooden cheeks of thine are counts with a fear. What soldiers, white face? The English force so please you. Quick, 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 quick. See you, Ted! Sweet him, I say! You will cheer me ever or to seek me now. I have no more now. My way of life has fallen into the fear. The yellow loop, the map which should come to know me. With honor, love, obedience, troops of friends, yet I must be looking up now, but in person, I must be looking up. It's the poor heart of fame and I am there. Satan! What's my great pleasure? What needs more? Oh, let's confirm my lord is in order. I will fight. Though from my bones my flesh be hacked. Bring me my armor. It's not needed yet. Bring me mine armor. How does it Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled with coming fancy to keep her from rest. Sure, for a Canst thou not minister to her mind as easy? Pluck from the memory of rooted sorrow, raise out the written troubles of the drain, and some sweet and luminous antho, cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff which weighs upon the heart. Therein, the patient thrust minister to himself. Co visits to the dog, though none of it. Come, put mine armor on! Doctor, the thane fly from you. Come, say his back Thou couldst not have cast the waters of mine. Find her disease and purge it to the sound of the sea help. And the body is the very echo that should have flown again. Hold off, I said. What blue bog summer? What perfect dark would scour these English hence? Hearst thou of them? Aye, my good lord. Your royal preparation makes us hear something. Bring it after me. I will not be afraid of death and being. Now, Barnum Wood, come to Dunsinane! Well, what is this before us? The Wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our hosts and make discovery err and report of us. It, it shall, shall be done. done! We learn no other but the confident tire and keep still in Dunsinane. Tis his main hope. Towards which advance the war! To Dunsinane! Hang out our banners on the outward wall. The cry is still they come. Our castle strength will lack the siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine and odds eat them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we would have met them dare for them. 
beard to beard and beat them backwards home. <laughs> what is that noise? Is the cry of women, my lord? I've almost forgot the taste of fear. The time has been my sister's little cool with her night shriek. I have sunk with horrors. Direness familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once stop me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. By an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue, thy story to me. Please, my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say so. As I stood my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and an army thought it would be good to move. What? And slay! Let me endure your wrath if it be not so. Within this three mile, may you see it coming. I see it moving right! If thou speakest false, upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive, till famine cling thee. If thy speech be sweet, I care not if thou dost for me as much. I told him resolution and begin to doubt the equivocation of a being that lies like truth. Fear not. For Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane, and now a wood comes towards Dunsinane. Arm, arm, and out! If this which he avouches does appear, there is no blind hence nor tearing here. I mean to be aware of the sun, and wish the present estate of the world were now undone. Ring the alarm bell! Blow, wind, come, rock! At least we'll die with harness on our back! Your leafy screams throw down and show like those you are. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon what else remains to do, according to our order. Very well. Do we will find the tyrant's coward tonight. Let us be beaten if we cannot fight! Make all our trumpets speak of them all breath. Those clamorous harbingers of blood and death! They have tied me to a stake, I cannot fly. But bear like I must fight this course. What's he who is not born of woman? Such a one I am to fear or none. What is thy name? Thou wilt be afraid to hear it. No, though thou callest thyself harder name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. The devil himself not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest, a poor tyrant, with more sword I'll prove the light thou speakest. Ugh! Thou art sport of woman. Sword I smile at, and weapons laugh to scorn. Brandish thy man that's of a woman born. Play the noises. Tyrant, show thy face. Thou beest 
plane, and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghost will haunt me still. I cannot strike at wretched currents whose arms are hired to bear their staves. Either be thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbattered edge I sheath again unheeded. That way thou shouldst be by this great clatter, when of greatest note seems brooded. Fortune, let me find him, and more I beg not. Why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, hellhound, turn! Of all men else, I have avoided thee. But get thee back, my soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain than traps to get out! <laughs> <laughs> Thou losest labor, as easy meets thou with the entrenched air with thy keen sword and press hath make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crest. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. <laughs> Despair thy charm, let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Accursed be the tongue that tells me, for it hath cowed my better part of man. And be these struggling fiends no more believe that pout to with us in a double sense, and keep word of promise to our ear. I'll not fight with thee! Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll let thee as our rare monsters are painted upon a pole, and under it here. May you see the tyrant! <laughs> I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited by the rabble's curse. <clears throat> though Burnham Wood becomes the Dunsinane, and though thou oppose me of no woman born yet, I will try the last. Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on Macduff, and damned be him that first cries, Hold! Enough! Ha! Ha! <clears throat> <clears throat> I would the friends we miss this sake of life, some must go off, and yet, by these I see, so great a day as you see we bought. Macduff is missing. Hail, King, for so thou art. Behold where stands the usurper's accursed head. The time is free. Hail, King of Scotland. Hail, Hail King, King of Scotland. Scotland. We shall not spend a large expanse of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My chains and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad, that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen, who, as tis thought by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us by the grace of grace, we shall perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one, whom we invite to see us crowned. Crowned at school.